And physically, I guess, Jeff has changed over the years from, from when he first came to you in the last few years he's been doing a lot of work with Dundee, muscling up and, and, and building up. Certainly that physical strength helped him in those closing rounds, didn't it? I mean, it became a very physical fight right from the get-go. And uh, as the bout progressed, I guess, the physical strength of Jeff was something that many, I don't think, was expecting. And, and secondly, that he could cope with it. Yeah, that, that's very true. I mean, Jeff, one of the first things I noticed about Jeff is he played soccer for 12 years and I often say to people, everything happens for a reason. He was to never made it in soccer to an elite level. It happens for a reason. I, I often say, you know, it's an old Chinese saying, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And, uh, you know, Jeff had good calves and I noticed his movement was good. And whether that's genetic or it's from the 12 years of soccer dribbling the ball, who knows, but again, he had very efficient legs. Uh, I said to him, your upper body needs a bit of work, Jeff. We don't have sort of many, this is after the Olympics, I said, I'd like to put a bit of more on your chest. I said, you could put a little bit more weight there, because remember, he fought as a 64 kilo light belt weight as an amateur, and when he went to you know, professionals, he did an odd thing, we went up a division. Most professionals, when they took game pro, go down a division because they only have to weigh in once and they do it the day before. But in our case, we went up one. So we had a little bit of fudge room there. And, you know, I said, I don't have a real lot of weights here at the gym. But uh, so we went into Dundee's and he had a lot more weights there. It's been great that Dundee's been able to get him onto working particularly chest and back and so forth and shoulders and try to build some strength in those areas, which has been great. So thank you, Dundee. Really appreciate the work that you've done there. And certainly that, that helped a lot. It was a physical fight. And again, I think a lot of the things that people don't realise about Jeff, everyone looks at Jeff because he's just such a friendly looking guy and no one ever picks him for a boxer, which I think is a blessing, by the way, and it's great for our sport. Uh, he's not a thug, he's a really good guy. He used to work in a childcare centre, school teacher, etc. So he's a perfect ambassador. And again, uh, but when they get out there, they think he's so strong. He's got great legs and he's just got that inner strength. He's just, he'll push you around, he'll lean on you. He's just, he's tough. He's very, very tough, very strong. And certainly that strength and conditioning work does pay dividends in the end just to have the, uh, that muscle when you need it. And he certainly used that to his advantage. When, you know, a couple of people said, oh, you know, is he going to fight dirty? And Jeff had talked about, you know, like he's going to smash at him, you know, and just, you know. And, but uh, another saying I often use is that, you know, when, when the only tool you've got is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So for Jeff, probably the only way he sees how to fight is ever, and he's going to get him close, he's just got to smash and hit him with 4,000 bunches. But I said, our, our intention was never to, to, uh, be dirty and Jeff is not a dirty fighter. He's a hard fighter but he's not a dirty fighter. Jeff caught the worst that remember that first headbutt in round two, he's come back with a gaping wound right above his right eye and I'm going, well, you know, if that blood gets in his eye, that's not going to be good at all. We're going to lose vision or lose the fight. So I had to manage that from round two. Many got a couple of cuts but they were thankfully on the side of his head. Apparently someone said he doesn't like the side of his own blood at all. Hang on, you know, we're boxing, we're not playing table tennis, you know, you, you, it's, it's going to happen. Uh, and I did say to Grantley the day before, I said, tomorrow's going to be Sunday, bloody Sunday. And I said, you know, I just see that this fight is going to it's going to be a war, it's going to go deep. So all of these things were expected. Um, and, you know, I don't think anybody can complain about Jeff doing anything dirty in that fight. We certainly didn't do that. A couple of people, by the way, another point of contention was the tape. We actually used Freddie Roach's tape, by the way. I asked him which was the most adhesive. He, he insisted it had to be white tape. He wouldn't let us use the brown tape. It had to be white. And again, I used the best one. When they come over, I didn't speak a word. I cut it off very quickly. So we didn't do anything wrong. We stuck to the rules. It was a tough fight. It was a hard fight. We always knew it would be. Uh, so I'll pass it back to Grandy again. But again, thank you, uh, Dundee, for your efforts with Jeff from the screen. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. When I started writing that uh, Jeff Warren would fight Manny Pacquiao at uh, the Suncorp Stadium, a lot of people thought it was a joke that it was going to happen. And then the, when, when the fight was finally agreed to, that Jeff Warren would have no chance against Manny Pacquiao. 
But in this fight, you guys have proved that anything is possible, that, that Jeff Fulton is capable of doing anything. So I guess maybe the next step after that, after you win the rematch, is the big gun Floyd Mayweather. I mean, you've already talked about how Jeff could beat Mayweather and uh, that Mayweather would win Conor McGregor and then perhaps that would be the super fight of, of 2018. Looking at Floyd Mayweather, I mean, he's undefeated, uh, one of the greatest boxers of all time, as was Ronnie Pacquiao and still is. What would your plan be to derail something like that Floyd Mayweather? He doesn't mind asking hard questions, does he? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, as I said to Jeff, firstly, would Floyd Mayweather the fight Jeff won? Maybe. Okay, I know he said in the press that Conor McGregor is definitely his last fight, but we have heard that before. We've heard that from many boxers. We've also heard that apparently OCIRS a fair bit of money or whatever. So, you know, if money Mayweather keeps pledging the money and suddenly finds he hasn't got enough, uh, and it doesn't matter how much they win. Remember that Mike Tyson reportedly won over 400 million US dollars and went bankrupt. So it's not a matter of how much money you wear and it's what you do with it. So it is possible. It's possible, and I suppose, would we fight Mayweather? Obviously, of course we would fight Mayweather. We never thought we'd get many. You know, when we were going through, we thought, ah, oh, such a shame because there's these two legends in the sport, many pack our Floyd Mayweather. We, I said to Jim, just. We just might, but they, we might just miss them. They may just go before we get there, but I pushed as fast as we could. That's why we, I kept saying to Juco, I only want world ranked fighters. Just they've got to be world ranked, 20 wins minimum, 90% win. I wanted a hard Jeff up, and I said, I want, I want the best fighters we can get. So we were always preparing for the opportunity to fight someone big. And when Bob Arum said to us last year, he had you, if you beat, uh, Ali Fenega, then we'll put you up against Vargas or Bradley. And I said, great. And, and he, he said after the fight, you know, I'll oh, arrange we'll that. I said, yeah, yeah, great. We're ready to take Vargas or Bradley, no problem. And then he's come back through Dean and said, would you be prepared to fight Manny Pacquiao? And I said, absolutely. I said, bring it on. You know, we're ready for Manny, bring it on. And Dean said, really? You want to, you want to go straight for Manny Pacquiao? I said, yep. I said, yeah, let's, if you can make that happen, let's do it. You know, so again, would we fight Floyd Mayweather? Absolutely, in a heartbeat. Can he be beaten? Yes. Okay, everyone. One of the sayings that I have with the guys in the gym is, there is a way. There is a way. In other words, there is a way to beat anyone. There is a way. Because if you don't think there's a way, I mean, you won't find it. So you've got to firstly believe there is a way. And now what we're focused on, what is that way? So once we believe there's a way, then we start looking for the way. So again with Floyd, whilst obviously I understand him, I would once again do hundreds of hours of video analysis and I would carefully craft the weaknesses of how to beat him. Now if anyone wants to fight with Maidana, the first fight I'm talking, Floyd Mayweather versus Maidana. For the first half of the fight, Maidana was winning that fight. He just couldn't sustain it. When Floyd Mayweather went up in gear and I think it was on probably the seventh round, might have been the sixth, I think it was the seventh, he went up in gear and Maidana just, I he didn't to me, either one he was lacking in fitness or he was lacking in belief and he suddenly found himself, and a lot of people do this in boxing and in life, they suddenly emerge to a point where suddenly, for example, they're a world champion and they go, heck, I shouldn't be here. I don't belong here, so their self-image is so weak, they find a way to bring themselves down to where they believe they really belong. Much like the people who win lotto, they generally end up broke within five or ten years, because they get suddenly thrust into millionaire status and go, hey, I don't belong here. So they find a way to get back to where they really believe they belong. So I've tried to build in Jeff the belief that he does belong there. He does belong there. I don't know if any of you people remember the old saying, but my mother always told me as a kid, you know, whenever you see someone drive past a nice car or a nice home, oh, that's how the other half live. You know, I used to hear it like, time and time again, that's how the other half live. And I said, well, you know what, I want to be in that half. You know, I don't like the crappy half wearing in. I want to be in that half. Of course, we all know it's not a half, it's like 1%. But, you know, and I think with Jeff now, he believes that he is that good. So with that, uh, that belief that he now has in his abilities, that he's grown and has taken a long time to get that, 
I think now all we need to do is craft the plan. And yes, I think Maidana showed weaknesses when when you hit uh, Floyd Mayweather from multiple directions, overhands, he struggles with those downward punches, that intense pressure, he got caught on the ropes, he got caught in the corner, and Maidana, Maidana almost had him, and he snatched defeat from victory. Remember that winners find a way to win, and losers find a way to lose. And, and somewhere after that sixth round, did anyone understand, by the way, what Floyd's father said to him when he went back to the corner after about the sixth round? And I remember him saying, Floyd's father, he went, <laughs> and I, I listened to that a few times, and Floyd came out and got on top of him, and I went, heck, he's, he's unbelievable, you know. I didn't get it, but somehow he conveyed some magic in those words that only Floyd and his dad knew. But whatever he did, I take my hat off to him. Because Floyd did go up a gear, and my donor dropped the gear, and Floyd ended up with a win. But I thought that was one of the closest he'd come to losing. So yes, there's lessons in that fight uh, that we can take on board. But there's a lot of other little weaknesses there that I will, um, if the fight comes up, I will share with you grandly, but I do have some other ideas on exactly how we can bring down Floyd Mayweather, which would be marvellous. class and I looked for about an hour last night for the photo because um, there was myself, Neil and my wife Lily we were all in the same photo in grade 7. I didn't know her and I met her about 8 years after that but uh, she was the new girl but certainly in that photo and I'd always remembered that Neil and I shared the exact same birthday. He's just a year older than me so we're both born on the 13th of August so it's, uh, uh, and he was a really good cricket player in school by the way Neil and he was a good boxer and we again met up at the National Fitness Centre on Charters Towers Road, so we boxed together. I did some boxing under Grand Rich, you know, after winning a world title, it was only getting $2,000 to defend it, there was no upside at all, there was no Olympics, no Commonwealth Games, nothing like that, and I just one day I said, I'm just getting tired of the martial arts scene, I think UFC, that sort of MMA is sort of slowly starting to come along, was just too brutal. And I decided to go back to boxing. I said, I'm going to go back to where I started. And, you know, in the first Olympic Games, we had Jeff at, the, at there. And I think from the first national titles every year at the nationals, we've always won at least one elite men's national title. And every year since the first nationals, we entered in, in two, uh, since 2007. So, so it's been a, been a great journey. I've, enjoyed going back into boxing. I think it's a marvellous sport. I think UFC is too, MMA is too brutal, and I think uh, boxing can be brilliant, but we just want to see the return to the heydays and bring boxing back to where we're filling stadiums all around the world. Greatest sporting event that I've, I've ever seen. Uh, Jeff Ward beating Manny Pacquiao. He didn't just win a world title, he beat Manny Pacquiao, one of the greatest fighters of all, all time before a record crowd in Australia. And Ray, thank you very much for coming up here. And, and please, everyone, thank Glenn Rushton for everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks again everybody, I really thank Grantley, I thank Ray, and I thank everyone here because this isn't just a win for Jeff Horn and Glenn Rushton, this is a win for all of us, you know, everyone is involved in this sport, anyone that was excited back there, you know, when Brad and Carly's uh, nephew, cousin, Lionel, what was cousin, Lionel Rose was your cousin, yeah. 
you know, I remember watching as a kid Lionel Rose fighting fighting a runner, and I was so inspired. I think it's about 11 then. And I'm sure, like a lot of us, uh, you know, I'm 60 next month, and I think a lot of people around my age would remember that fight and how inspired we were as Australians with what Lionel Rose did then. That really. Uh, hit a note with me that that fight, and of course watching Muhammad Ali and Joe, all those great fights, and it's just it's a great sport. So again, this is a win for all of us. Okay, I think we should all rejoice that boxing is back. It's back. <laughs>